Hello everyone, in this tutorial we will create this procedural glitter material that you see on the screen. I will go through all the steps from start to finish. I hope you like it, so let's start. You can use any 3D object if you want to. I am starting with a sphere object. First we are going to switch to shading window so we can see the object in default HDR lighting and with the shader editor below. Click new to create the material. I am going to rename it to glitter. Now change the base color to blue. We can change it later as needed. Next we are going to add a glossy BSDF node. After that, add a mix shader node. Connect the principal BSDF to mix shader and glossy BSDF to mix shader as well. Connect the output of the mix shader to the material output. The color of our object will change. You can use any color in the glossy BSDF node. The result will be a mix of colors from the principal node and the glossy node. Now we are going to add a Veronite texture node. Connect the distance property to the factor of the mix shader. You will see a texture pattern generated over the object. Reduce the texture size by changing the scale value so it looks more visible. Add a map range node and drop it after the Veronite texture node. In the map range, we will change the from max and from min values till we have some dot like pattern. Something close to 0.3 and 0.35 seems to give the result we need. You can test other values also. Reduce the roughness value to 0 in the glossy node and our dot pattern texture will become reflective and show the environment in it. Use any color you like, I am going to keep it to light pink. Add a normal map node. Connect the color property from the Veronite texture node to the normal map color property and then connect the normal property to the glossy node's normal property. This will make the dot texture pattern reflections look more randomized and give a more natural glittery look. I am going to change the metallic value to 1 in the principal node. This depends on the type of look you want. If you are going for a non-metallic look, then keep it to zero. I like the darker reflective look, so I changed it. To further add some variation to the colors, add a color ramp node. Connect the color property from the color ramp to the base color. With the color ramp selected, press Ctrl T and this will add three nodes, image texture, mapping and coordinate node. We don't need the image texture node, so we can remove it. Connect the vector from the mapping node to the factor of color ramp. 
change the texture coordinate from UV to object. Now we can assign different colors to our base object. I am going to use our green and dark orange color. You can also change the Z value in the mapping node to move the color position or rotate them as you want. Change the glossy color to white as it seems to show the glitter effect better. You can also connect the mapping node vector property to the Veronai texture vector as well if you want to control the rotation, position and scale. After connecting, change the value in the Veronai texture node so it looks bigger. In the map range node, if we change the 2 max property value, we can further add a little more detail alongside the dot pattern texture. In the render properties turn on bloom also, use the default settings. You can also check the result in different HDR lighting by changing the default HDR images. The glitter material will match the light of the environment. The next step you can skip but if you want to add the same glitter color from the base object, you can connect the color property from the color ramp to the glossy node color property. In this way you can have different glitter colors. I will add a bright contrast node and change the contrast value only to make the glitter colors shine more. If you want to use a single color glitter, then simply cut the connection from the brightness node so we have only one color, which I think also looks good, but this depends on the result you want. As this is a procedural material, if we make any edits in the base geometry object, the material will auto adjust itself. For instance, if we go in the edit mode, I will select some faces and extrude them. The glitter material will cover the newly edited part as well. Finally for the rendering. Make sure to assign an HDR image as the environment texture in the world settings and add a sunlight also to create an additional sparkling effect over the 3D object. If you want a solid color background, then you can use the same node setup that I have shown here or check my other crystal tutorial which shows all the steps for setting this up. And this completes the tutorial. I hope you find it useful. If you like to see more videos in the future, then please give this video a like and subscribe. Thank you very much for viewing and I will see you in the next one.